Did you know that Fantastic Rum was made on the island of Granada? Do you even know where Granada is? If you're a widely read rum nerd, you probably do. But I didn't know much about Granada or that they were making Fantastic Rum until my friend, spirits writer, Dylan Ettinger brought me a bottle of this here Rivers Rum for a recent press trip he took. As soon as I tasted it, it blew my mind. And now my friends, I am obsessed. This led me down the Granada rum rabbit hole, and today I've got a couple of different rums that we are gonna talk and taste through. When you think of rum production, not many people think of the island of Granada. It's just not the first place you think of. Honestly, when I first heard of rum production on that island, my only touchstone for where Granada is was the US invasion of the island in 1983 as part of the Cold War. But Granada has a rich history of rum production by way of sugar production, which dates all the way back to 1762 after the French ceded control of the island to the British. I've always felt that you can appreciate things best when you understand a bit of their backstory. So today, let's dive in before we have a taste. Granada is a small island nation located between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. It sits about 100 miles north of Venezuela and is the last island in a long arc of islands known as the Lesser Antilles. It is known as the Island of Spice because of its prolific production of nutmeg and mace and was discovered by Christopher Columbus as he sailed by without making landfall in 1498. For 150 years after European discovery, the island was dominated by the native Carib people who thwarted the first attempts at colonization, but eventually, by 1650, the French were able to establish a colony at the location which is now St. George's Town and the capital of the island. Granada remained in French hands until 1762, after which, as I mentioned earlier, they gave control to the British, who wasted no time in putting sugar plantations on the island and importing slaves to work them. And of course, where sugar is being produced, rum was sure to follow. According to Matt Pietrick, the cocktail wonk, by 1776, the British had 106 sugar estates on the island and were exporting around 819,000 gallons of rum. Today, there are four distilleries on the island of Granada, two of which are actually distilling. The oldest is Rivers Royal Grenadian Rum, which brings us to the very first bottle I have here. The Rivers Distillery has been making rum since 1785, and it is the oldest functioning water-powered distillery in the Caribbean. From all accounts, the distillery is like taking a step into the past. The cane is milled by a gravity-fed water wheel, the copper pot stills are heated by wood-fed fires, and fermentation takes place in open copper vats. It seems that little has changed at the distillery since the 18th century. The distillery is currently run by Shirley Richards and her family, who have maintained the traditional practices at the distillery. It sits on 247 acres of land and has around 37 acres of sugarcane. They only produce overproof rum, and up until recently, the rum has only been sold on the island. Rivers makes two expressions of rum. One comes in at 75% ABV or 150 proof. This rum is only made for the local market and is not legal to transport in on an airplane. The second is at 69% ABV or 138 proof and made for export. That one you can take home with you. Without getting too much into the details of how it's made, I'll just say that both expressions are made from fresh cane juice as opposed to molasses and ferments in large 11,000 liter vats over six to 10 days. The ferment is then distilled by two copper pot stills, which are heated by direct fires fed by wood from the local forest. The distillate then comes off the stills at between 80% and 83% ABV. After this, the rum is proofed using water from a local spring. All right, I think that's it. Let's get into tasting it. So the nose is crazy. I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of like Haitian Claren and rum agricole. It has like vegetal, like a vegetal nose with pear, peppercorn, banana. It's a little bit tropical on the nose. The more you smell it, the more vegetal minerality you'll, you'll get. It's really pear for it. it has a lot of pear, like bright, fresh, crispy pear. I do get banana as well. Maybe a little tropical fruit. It does have some vegetal notes to it. It's really dominated by that pear smell though. I mean, it's so good. It's so high proof. I almost want to proof it down. It's really spicy. It's kind of hot, but it doesn't burn your palate, which is really interesting. It's very reminiscent of like high ester Jamaican rums. It has lots of fruit notes. It's got kiwi. It's got star fruit. It's got banana. It's got that pear again. Um, it's spicy. I can taste that peppercorn. Really sharp, really bright. There's a little bit of residual bitterness, which is really nice. And it's just like a very, ah, it's just like a nicely 
balanced flavor profile. I can understand why the locals love this so much. I mean, they love this so much that it was hard for Rivers to keep up with production because the local economy was buying up all the rum. Um, so it was for a time quite hard to get. You can now buy this in the States. I have uh, Dylan again to thank for this bottle who brought it back from uh, the Rivers Distillery for me uh, when, when he went to Granada on a story. But uh, I did notice that bitter is in bottles. So as, as long as, it, at least if you're in California, you can get this. I'm pretty sure that you could probably get it from like the whiskey exchange or something like that if you're in Europe. It is more widely distributed than it had been in the past. So I think you should definitely pick this bottle up. I love it. It is fantastic. So Renegade Rum here is a new project from uh, Mark Rainier, who is the man behind Brook Laddie, Single Malt Scotch, and then also Waterford Irish Whiskey. I am just very obsessed with this rum. It's the craziest, most interesting rum I think I've ever tasted. Renegade is a terroir-driven project born out of Rainier's aspiration to change the rum game. He built a $25 million distillery from scratch on the island, but before doing that, he began planting sugarcane to prove that they could produce Produce enough to make a distillery worthwhile. In 2015, he began Cane Company to reintroduce seven varieties of sugarcane island-wide. Plans for distilling began in earnest in 2018, and Renegade began actually producing rum in September of 2020, just before the pandemic hit. Renegade is produced entirely from fresh sugarcane juice, none from molasses, the rum is unsweetened and unchill filtered, so both natural in color and texture. The two bottles I have here are expressions of pre-cask rum, both clocking in a respectable 50% ABV or 100 proof. And my favorite of the two is Hope, which is made from the oldest variety of sugar cane on the island known as cane. That's C-A-I-N cane, not C-A-N-E. The sugar cane is grown on the southeastern flank of the island. Each site on the island uh, were chosen specifically for the different uh, sugar cane varietals taken into consideration the climate, the soil type and the altitude. This rum was distilled in a pot still in 2019. All right, let's taste it. I love the shape of the bottle, by the way. I just want to say that as well. Branding and bottle shape for me are really, really important. I'm also really loving that they are using these uh, glass corks as well, just like the glass stopper. Everything about it to me just feels nice. All right, on the nose, so again, this is gonna be, you know, very reminiscent of like Haitian Claren or Rum Agricole. Um, the nose strikes me as quite grassy. It has some very pronounced unripe banana, tropical fruit, cacao. Yeah, I got like a, like a little wheatgrass. And it also has a bitterness on the nose as well. Well, it's crazy tasting. So, I mean, crazy in the best way possible. It's really bright and has these big tropical funk notes that build on your palate. It has a really striking salinity as you swallow it right on the back palate. And it has something like meaty, like uncured meat or like uncured sausage or something. It's not something that I would expect in an unaged rum. You also get this real lemon note vibe. It's not as hot as the Rivers is, but it's a little spicy on the back palate. A tiny bit vegetal, but that salinity and that meatiness is on the back palate and it kind of dominates. So it's like this bright kind of tropical fruit fl like flavors that then just devolve into this like a meaty salinity. It's, it's amazing. I've never tasted rum like this before. So that's the hope expression. I have another expression here called nursery, and we're gonna dig into that now. So the nursery is distilled from Yellow Lady sugarcane grown in the upper La Colombe Valley, and is also a pot still rum. Again, this rum is completely unaged. It is untouched by wood. It comes in at 100 proof or 50% ABV. Let's see how similar this is. Different sugarcane varietal, but from the same island, but on a different spot on the island. So again, I'm gonna say uh, a little bit of uh, minerality, salinity, you get that bright lemongrass character. It's funky, but it's not as funky. It's a little bit more subdued and it has a nice bright citrusiness about it and a citrusiness of work. Um, also some tropical notes, very similar to the Hope, but it's a little bit more subtle. It's so much brighter and so much more citrusy um, in its character than the Hope. This one's good too. And you also get that, you know, intense spicy mouthfeel. It's got a really long finish and that finish is where you get a lot of those tropical notes that you found, that we found in the Hope. It also has a little bit of that woody bitterness. 
uh, to it and I'm detecting some herbs as well. I can't really put my finger on it. Okay, so maybe some sage. I don't know, you definitely get some meat. I taste a little thyme in there maybe. It's also a really good idea to lengthen this stuff with water and so you can spread that flavor profile out and really taste a lot of the nuances because as you drink, you know, it's 100 proof. Uh, just like the Rivers is also like 100 and however many proof, 36 proof or whatever. So it's very hot and um, you really start to kind of burn out your your taste buds as you go. When you lengthen it, not only are you proofing it down, you're also breaking apart that flavor profile, you're spreading it out really nicely and you can really get a lot of the nuances that way as well. You just don't wanna to add too much water. I'd probably say start with a like a dash to a quarter of an ounce and then maybe go up to about a half an ounce as you go and kind of taste it through. I'm not gonna do that on this video, but I did do it when I was tasting these rums initially and really kind of forming opinions about it. I also think that it's really important to support projects like this because these rums are really taking the idea of terroir into consideration. They're revitalizing, uh, you know, previously thought to be defunct species of sugarcane. And I think that this type of transparency, especially in the rum industry, is really important. If you look on the back of the bottle, you actually have a cane code right here. And when you go to the website, you can push that cane code in and it will tell you every single piece of information you want to know about what is inside this bottle, which is incredible because the rum industry is an industry that has been veiled in a lot of secrecy. You don't really know what is inside your rum bottles a lot of the time. And so having something like this where you know exactly what is in it is amazing. And I really hope that it's a trend that the rum industry follows. All right, guys, that's it for today's rum tasting. I hope you really liked this little dive into Grenadian rum. I want to keep doing videos like this, so I hope you guys like them. If you liked this video, hit me up in the comments and let me know, and I will continue making videos like this. Uh, this is a smaller channel than our main channel, so if you hit like and hit subscribe, it really helps us out. If you comment, it really helps us out. Those are free ways that you can help the channel grow. And uh, if you guys engage with this video more, then it will tell companies that they can send us products that we can then review for you guys, which would help us out greatly because buying them with our own money is it's quite expensive. So I will see you guys in another time. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this video.